Well, I think we differ on this one, Paul, don't we? Because I am so pro this takeover. <laughs> um, and, and I get really, you know, I get, I get a lot of stick in my patch from all the Sunderland fans for kind of possibly supporting this. But actually, the amount that came through my inbox saying... This is an opportunity for this club. This is an opportunity for um, regeneration, not just for the club, but for the wider region. Why on earth are we not being able to take it? I think it's, it's, it's such a huge opportunity for people in the yeah. North East. It's a classic case of what has become known as sports washing. It's a way for you know, corrupt and tyrannical individuals and regimes to try to launder their image by investing in a popular sport, a popular club winning over the, the local population um, and trying to, to pretend to people, actually, look, we're not so bad. We've just bought Newcastle United. <laughs> but the truth is that, I mean, for all their, their commitments that the Saudi state isn't going to be mm -hmm. running the club, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Sal Salman, who was in, implicated in the murder of the, the journalist Jamal um, Khashoggi, uh, is the chair of the, 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 the group that's, that's bought the club. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to buy into the idea that, that he and the Saudi state is not going to have any influence over how that club is run. And, and what strikes me, actually, is at the same time as footballers have been, you know, taking the knee now for months because they want to protest against harassment and discrimination campaign for equality, challenge prejudice, etc., and then all of a sudden you get people come into a Premier League football club and buy it. People who have got blood on their hands, let's be blunt, the human rights record in, in Saudi Arabia is absolutely appalling. And suddenly people want to turn a blind eye to it um, and, you know, welcome it and say, actually, this is, this is not a problem. I think it's selective outrage, and I think yeah. selective outrage is but, hypocritical. But surely this is an opportunity, though, for that sort of soft power approach, because as the, the sort of Saudi consortium sort of buy into to British football, they're going to be more exposed to the sort of values we have in the UK. We've even got the Newcastle LGBTQ plus inclusive supporters group called United with Pride, and they've come out and said this could be a real <laughs> opportunity to try and help promote our values actually out there in well, South What I would say, though, Jim, is that, that that's, an argument, that's an argument to sell a club to anybody. Yeah. You know, you could, you could simply say, you know, the most corrupt, tyrannical regime, well... You know, sell them the club, let them let them come in because that's a way for them to to you know learn our values and and you know we can use that as an opportunity to persuade them to do things differently in the future. I don't buy it. I don't think that these people have got any interest in Newcastle as an area. I don't think they've got any interest in Newcastle United Football Club. As far as I'm aware, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman was not a Newcastle United fan as a young kid growing up. Um, and I think this is simply about mm. wielding influence and sports washing to try to, to launder their own image. So, you know, I'm, I'm really uncomfortable about it. I think the owners and directors test um, that applies, the Premier League apply to uh, people who, who want to take over football clubs is clearly not robust enough. It should have a human rights aspect to it. It doesn't. Um, and I think football has probably got a lot to, to answer for on this. And the same, frankly, with the World Cup next year. Well, I was going to say, I mean, this is small Qatar. beer compared to the World Cup. Well, exactly. Qatar, Qatar another beer. regime with, with a pretty... I mean, this, is, this, will be, this will be one of the most globally watched sporting events. And we're all going to the World Cup in Qatar next year. So, I mean, unless the same people who are screaming about the Saudi takeover of Newcastle United, unless they're saying we shouldn't be going to the World Cup, they're not being very consistent, is my view on it, I have to say. Interesting, though, isn't it? Saudi Arabia, you know, now they're hosting big boxing bouts. They're holding big snooker championships. There's Formula One motor racing going there. So whatever their motives, Paul, they are getting involved in sport generally in a very, very big way. Uh, Vince Cable, what do you make of this takeover? Well, I, I, I think that, to my mind, the, the really bad thing about it is the kind of cynicism that we now just take for granted in the Premier League. I mean, it, you know, maybe all this money is going to help regenerate Newcastle, but what about one of the other clubs that's going to get relegated because uh, Newcastle can buy their way out of trouble? You know, what about Burnley or Crystal Palace, whoever's going to go down in their place? Uh, and, they, you know, effectively, they're just buying themselves a place uh, in the top one or two teams with Manchester City, um, Spurs uh, and possibly Liverpool get pushed down as a result of it. I mean, this whole idea that vast quantities of money can be just used to massage your position in, in Premier League football is just making it a joke. And it's, it, it's uh, all the more uh, damning because a few months ago we, we threw out this idea of the European nations competition because it 
you know, big money was speaking and, and here we are uh, letting it in. What, what makes, um, I mean, you know, a lot of, there are lots of regimes of bad human rights records. We know that uh, Avramovich is close to Putin and most other things. But I think what does mark this out as very different is the very close links between uh, the regime and the Saudi investment fund. I mean, it is very much a Saudi state investment. Uh, and that's why I think higher levels of scrutiny have to be applied here. So Vince Cable, thank you very much indeed for joining us here this morning on GB News. And yeah, he's got a fair point, but I think in some ways, uh, when it comes to big money in the Premier League, that past maybe was sold mm. just a few years ago. I think, I think there is some kind of frustration that if it's OK for Manchester City, why isn't it OK uh, yeah. for us in Newcastle? I can. I have to say, you know, Newcastle United are a huge football club and they've been starved of success for decades and years decades. Or yeah, I mean, I think the last, the last bit of silverware they won <laughs> that was worth anything, I think, was the FA Cup final in 1955, if memory serves correctly. So, so you can understand, if, if, you were, if you were a Newcastle United supporter who hadn't seen that success yeah. and, and had underachieved perennially, that you might be almost a case of any port in a storm. You know, we welcome, we welcome this money. We'll turn a blind eye to who it is. But I have to say, I think there's bigger questions here about, as you said, Diana, this is about soft power. This is not about the love of a football club. Um, and that concerns me that we're falling for a political game to allow a tyrannical regime to, to try and launder in its image through getting involved in British football. And legally, it's done. It's over. It's apparently even so. If, even yeah. if the other 19 protest. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's happening. Yeah. It's happening. Arlene, what are your thoughts on this? Where is she? <laughs> right. Because of the disgraceful, uh, diabolical refereeing last night in, in last night in Switzerland, where we lost two nil, and um, <laughs> it's um, it's very sad that I won't be going to the World Cup. But let me say this: in terms of um, the Premier League, it is a global uh, commodity. It is the richest league in the world, the most watched league in the world. And therefore, there's going to be foreign money that comes into the UK as a result of that. I mean, and you look at the amount of money that has gone into uh, other clubs. I think it is a little bit hypocritical to just take on Newcastle United when there are so many other clubs in the Premier League mm -hmm. who have uh, money from other parts of the world. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.